What's going on everyone? I'm Evan Santapani for Animal and today we are going to talk nutritional strategy for cutting. Yes, the weather is getting warm outside. Getting in shape is on everyone's mind, right? Whether it's to hit the beach or whether it's to step on stage, a lot of you are thinking about getting in shape. Now, before I go any further, I want you to know that every month, me and the team at Animal, we get together, we talk and we say, hey, what do we think people would like to hear about? What can we deliver? To the consumer? What can we deliver to the people who follow our brand to give them information, entertainment, etc.? We do our best. But guys, feel free to comment below. Let us know what you want to see because we'll be happy to deliver. Now, chances are you already are familiar with this concept, but you've probably never thought about it consciously. When you're trying to get in the best shape possible, okay, and when you look at people who have the greatest amount of success in doing so, there's two things, okay, that those people do really, really well. Number one, and this is very obvious, they stay on track, all right? The train does not go off the track. No plan, doesn't matter how perfect it is, if you're not able to follow it, if you're not able to remain compliant with it, it's useless. Second thing they do is they maintain control. What do I mean by that? When you're trying to get in shape, right? You're gonna sit down and you're gonna put together a nutritional strategy. You're gonna put together a training regimen. Chances are there's a plan for cardio, all right? And you wanna use it all in concert. You're also probably gonna make certain lifestyle adjustments. You're probably not gonna be out partying. You're gonna to go to bed at a certain time. You're gonna drink X amount of water each day. Those are all things that you're doing to try to control, all right? Your daily circumstances because you believe that it's gonna bring you closer to your goal fast and efficiently. And people who are really, really good at achieving physique-related goals, that's what they do. They maintain control because maintaining control reduces the possibility for variation, all right? Variation, I hate to say it, <laughs> <laughs> because variation sounds like variety, and variety may be the spice of life, <laughs> but it's the antithesis, okay, of getting in optimal shape. I hate to say it, maybe you don't want to hear it. Now, this isn't to say uh, people don't have success, okay, with flexible dieting. Plenty of people do, but, and I train people all the time. People come to me for coaching, and you wouldn't believe how many people I get where they've gone the flexible dieting route and it becomes exhausting. Flexible dieting, if you're not familiar, it basically, you know, you have a set amount of macros that you're gonna consume each day, and you could pretty much obtain those macros from whatever food sources you choose. What, what ends up happening inevitably, in a lot of instances, is people will start pulling back on macros here or there, uh, and it almost becomes like a competition so that they can consume some wacky foods throughout the day. So it's like, well, if I don't get any uh, fat uh, from my first four meals, then I can have uh, hostess, uh, hostess cakes or ho-hos or ding-dongs or devil dogs uh, at meal five. Now, <laughs> personally, that strategy doesn't so much resonate with me and a lot of people uh, in the long run it doesn't pan out so well. And they're constantly having to think about their macros. This is the point of this video. When you are trying to get in the best shape possible, you wanna simplify the process, okay? You don't wanna to have to think, you don't wanna to have to be constantly calculating, you wanna make it as efficient as possible. How do you do it? I'm gonna tell you, this is something I've done for years when I'm trying to get in shape, I consume a very limited number of foods. Now, that might not sound appealing, but hear me out. <laughs> There's only a certain number of foods that I'm going to look to when I'm trying to get in shape because certain foods digest really well for me. I have a liking for certain foods. And this is the next key factor. I look to foods that are predominantly a source of one macronutrient. So you see some foods before me. And there's one thing that they all have in common. They're pretty much a source of just one macronutrient. What do I mean? I have ground turkey breast right here. It's 99% lean. It's pretty much a pure protein source. There's very little fat. There's obviously no carbohydrates. 
Same exact scenario with this codfish. It's pretty much pure protein, almost no fat, certainly no carbs. White rice, just carbs. Got some broccoli, carbohydrates, fiber. Grapefruit, same thing, it's carbs. And I've got olive oil, a pure fat source. If I were to construct my diet of these six foods, and these six foods only, it would be so easy to make adjustments as necessary. What do I mean by make adjustments? There's gonna be times throughout the dieting process when you're gonna decide, ah, you know what? Let me scale back on, you know, maybe you start doing some carb cycling. Say, well, let me reduce my carbohydrate intake. If my base diet is 250 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbs, and 75 grams of fat, let me drop the carbs by 100 grams for three days, and then I'm gonna bring them back up. If your carbs are coming predominantly from rice, all you gotta do is change the amount of rice you're consuming, and boom, you fixed it. By contrast, and I had a client the other day ask me, like, Evan, how come you don't put dairy in my diet? I love cottage cheese. Fair question. There's nothing wrong, right, with, with dairy or cottage cheese, assuming you digest it well. Problem I have with it as a dieting food is that it contains protein, contains fats, contains carbohydrates. Certainly not a bad thing for the off season, but when you're trying to diet, now, if I wanted to reduce that person's um, carbs by X amount, well, that cottage cheese per serving, let's just say in a cup of cottage cheese, there's a, I don't know, I'm just making up a number, 15 grams of carbs. Well, if I'm gonna start peeling back the carbohydrate number, I'm also taking from the, the protein number, and I'm also affecting the fat number. So if I stick with foods that are single macro sources, it's so much easier. Plus, and you, this cannot be underestimated, when you go to the grocery store, okay, and you have a list, because let's just say you're flexible dieting, and this week you have three new recipes you're gonna try, or you're gonna start bringing in this food or that food. First of all, you run the risk of, you don't really know how it's gonna affect your digestion, but also, you're going to have to change, you know, the, the length of your grocery list starts getting long. You've got to think every day. You're going to be tabulating macros. And uh, guys, guys, listen. Just, just accept the fact. <laughs> this, is, this is bodybuilding. And when I say this is bodybuilding, I don't mean this is competitive bodybuilding. I mean, this is any endeavor where we're going to use diet and training to elicit a certain aesthetic or performance result. It's monotonous, it is. Training is monotonous, cardio is monotonous, the lifestyle is monotonous. Accept it and learn that it is to your benefit, okay? Because with monotony is the control of variability, all right? So just relinquish, just, just resign yourself to the fact that there's gonna be a certain level of monotony. Keep it simple, all right? And that is what's gonna get you there as efficiently as possible. Trust me on this, all right? And when you're dieting, keep in mind, because variety can be decreased and because calorie intake is low, sometimes, you know, you're not getting the amount of vitamins or minerals that you require, something like animal pack becomes that much more relevant, all right? Because when you're trying to get in shape, you need your body to function the way that it's meant to function. And the, and the inclusion of proper amounts of vitamins and minerals is crucial to that point. And although we're always gonna use whole foods to construct our nutritional strategy, supplements are always there to support it. Case in point, Animal Cuts, there's a stim version, there's a stim-free version. Animal Pack is always there to support your vitamin and mineral intake, all right? Animal Greens, I know there's a lot of you out there that are opposed to the intake of anything green. Now, personally, I think you should eat your vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> but some of you, I know you're not gonna. So lean on supplements when you have to. Guys, that's my advice. As always, keep it simple, make it happen. I'll see you soon.